Welcome to week five of Retail Management, BUS 302. This is lecture number one. And this week we are talking about retail strategy and technology. And so some of the primary learning outcomes for the week include talking about how we can generate a strategic advantage with our supply chain. We wanna talk about information flows within the supply chain. Um, and talk about also the customer relationship management process, use how we can use data to analyze um, customer relationships and think about different relationship management programs and how they can be more effective, all, along with the rest as you can go through and read for yourself. Now, when you start thinking about this topic of retail management or retail strategy and technology, you might be wondering, okay, how does supply chain, you know, connect to this, right? Well, especially because, you know, supply, supply chain is this process where a retailer is going to work with a wholesaler uh, to buy products from manufacturers, right? So this is, or you'll have wholesalers in the middle that are buying products from manufacturers and then selling to retailers. So you, you've got this supply chain, right? And as a retail manager, one of the things that you need to do is manage this, um, this relationship with your wholesalers and manufacturers. So all the activities and techniques that go into managing how uh, merchandise is gonna flow through the system is called supply chain management. And this can be a real source of strategic, uh, of, a, of a strategic advantage, a competitive advantage if managed well. So you might be thinking, okay, well, why are we talking about with technology? Well, you know, we've got, especially when you start thinking about how how things can go through the system, you know, wholesalers or retailers will have a distribution center where they'll take in and they'll receive merchandise uh, from a wholesaler or a merchandiser. Uh, and then they'll take the, at the distribution centers, they, they break that merchandise up and send it out to their various locations. Or sometimes the retailers will use what's called a fulfillment center. Now, fulfillment center actually ships directly to the customer. So that's a little different than a distribution center. So we got these two things. And if you manage these areas well in your supply chain, again, you can have the strategic advantage. It, it looks something like this, right? You've got the manufacturers on the extreme left. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna ship goods directly probably to a distribution center, and then the distribution center is gonna break those goods up and send them to the various locations. Now, obviously a manufacturer can ship directly to a location, uh, but a lot of times you're gonna use, most of the time you're gonna use those um, the distribution centers, right? So as you look, you can see that uh, manufacturers one and three are shipping to the distribution centers, and then everything goes out from there. And then distribution center two, or uh, manufacturer number two is sending directly to uh, a couple of stores, not sending to all of the stores, just certain ones. So you can use this again to create a strategic advantage. Right now, the reason that we include supply, we talk about supply chain along with information technology is that the best way to manage the supply chain is with ex with using lots of great information technology um, and retailers that understand this you know if a retail company really understands this what's going to happen is they're going to be able to generate higher uh, returns so the example that we talk about it and again this is and it's super difficult for competitors to duplicate if it's done over the entire time of the company. So the example that we have here is Walmart. Walmart is the, probably the world's best at supply chain management, right? So they've made huge investments into their technology over not just a period of time, we're talking decades. So Mr. Sam was brilliant when it came to this and Walmart was really the first company uh, retail company to, to realize that UPC codes, those barcodes that are on products have value. So uh, again, I've shared in some of the previous lecture videos that I, I was a retail, you know, I've been a retail manager and I actually started in retail uh, back, I started working in retail 
um, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. It was in the 1980s. Now, um, even though I started working in retail in the 1980s, I grew up on the sales floor of a Sears department store because my grandfather worked for Sears. So I would visit him at work. And so pretty much my entire life, I've been around retail. And in the early days, well, in the early days, in my early career, in the 80s, you would go to work and every product had a price tag on it. That was one of the things that I worked on. I had to price every every product, every everything that came in because there were no scanners. There was no uh, UPC barcode readers. We would actually have to hand key at the register every single item, hand key it with the price. It took forever, right? So in the 19, late 1970s, early 80s, Mr. Sam realizes there's these UPC codes, which is a universal product code that has this barcode. And so he starts trying working with um, various technology suppliers to say, okay, uh, how do we use these UPC codes uh, and these barcodes? Can we develop a reader that will allow us to uh, connect these UPC codes into our si into a computer system somewhere? And so Mr. Sam was really adamant about that. And they made, so Walmart made huge investments in technology. Um, they, they also have this, <coughs> excuse me, the size to justify these investments. I mean, when you're talking about the world's largest retailer, they're able to make significant investments into technology to manage their supply chain. Um, they're also constantly learning how they can improve those systems uh, by getting feedback from vendors and suppliers and the, the you know their and and their associates and everything else, so they're going to be constantly learning now. Because of that, they they've developed most of their systems internally, rather than going out to suppliers and telling a technology company, "Hey, can you do you have some sort of inventory system?" You know, now with what I do and working with uh, businesses. I, I help them design systems that that will help them, you know, earn money. So, and part of that is the point of purchase system. You know, how can we? What kind of system, accounting software system, can we can we put in at your at your place of business to make everything work a little better? So, uh, so I work on that end more on the accounting side. And you can purchase a POS system. You can purchase this from a QuickBooks or another company very easily, but you're going to be using the system that somebody else designed. Walmart has developed their own system, so it works the way they want it to, which really helps them long term. Now, all these activities are also taking place within the company, right? So they've done all this development internally. And so com competitors aren't able to get information on how you know what's walmart doing right so it make it so they aren't able to copy it right and then the culture of the company supports this at every level of the uh, you know throughout the entire company this uh, walmart company they're all focused on supply chain and getting products out how do we do this really well and so the culture of the company does this throughout so when you really focus on using and managing your supply chain through technology you can create a huge strategic advantage. And that's why Walmart has grown to what it is today. All right. Now, along these lines, uh, along this line, right, the because they've done such a good job managing their um, supply chain, right, they're able to reduce what's called a stock out. So when you go through a store and you see empty spaces on a shelf, that is a stock out. And that causes customers frustration, right? If you go to the store to buy whatever's on, you know, the salsa dip that we have here in the picture, right? If you went to buy that salsa dip, you know, and it's not there, that causes frustration and, you know, consumers get mad. Now, back when I started in retail, what would happen is if it was a sale item, we would give somebody a rain check and say, okay, here's, you know, when it does come in, you can purchase it at that price. You've got this rain check, right? Now, that doesn't happen as much anymore, right? Now we tell you to go online, order it there, everything else. So 
Efficiently managing your supply chain will reduce the stockouts, give you better product availability. The other thing is with all the technology, you know exactly what products you're selling. You know exactly what's leaving your store. So you can now tailor the products for your store, maybe based on your climate or that target customer base, right? Um, and again, this is something that Walmart does really well, because if you go to the fishing, the sporting goods department at Walmart and look at fishing lures down in Florida, you're going to see things for deep sea fishing and everything else. You go to Walmart, the sporting goods section of Walmart in, say, Minnesota, and go look at fishing lures. You're not going to see deep sea fishing stuff. You're going to see all the lake stuff, right? So they're able to tailor these assortments because they manage their supply chain so well. Right now, when you manage the supply chain well, right, you're going to have a higher return on assets because, again, you're you're going to be able to know what products are moving and selling. Right. And so that's going to improve your return on it, your return on assets because your inventory turnover is going to go up. Right. So you're going to be able to sell more. You're going to manage that profit margin, but you're not going to have to increase your inventory level and have more and in, more inventory. Right. So this is one of those things that, again, we can improve our profit margin if we increase our gross margin, lower some expenses. If we can use good forecasting, casting, not have as much overstock like we don't, aren't keeping as much in the back room. All these things will help us have a better return on assets long term. Right. So, for example, this is how well and this is how information flows. This is what Walmart. This is what Mr. Sam saw in the 1970s. Right. Right. We, we have the scan. We scan the universal product code that UPC at the point of sale terminal. Right. So at number one, we have the customer going to the store. They're buying everything. So they, that's where we scan that information. Now, information flow two goes from the terminal to the buyer. Right. So the terminal and the buyer, they're going back and forth. The corporate office sees what people are buying, everything else. You have the manufacturer. Now the buyer can communicate with, with the manufacturer. That's great. So we can know when to order information, uh, order products, everything else. Now, so that's one part of the flow. The other part of the flow is as we go through line four, the store, because everything's connected with through technology now, the store can communicate directly to the manufacturer. You might think, well, why would we do that? So this is where Walmart has done really, really well with that. They can com communicate that information with manufacturers. And so they're able to tell manufacturers. So every day, Procter & Gamble, they make Tide and on other thing, among other things, right? They get a report from Walmart. Hey, here's how much Tide we sold today. By the way, we're paying you for it now because they share that information. They've developed that. Now uh, Procter & Gamble will ship uh, product to the stores, not charge Walmart for it until it's actually sold. They actually use the Walmart distribution centers and everything as a way to store their inventory. And it helps the manufacturer. It also helps the, the, the uh, retailers. So many great things. So that's information flow number four. Now, when you look at flow five, where you're going from the store to the distribution center, this is really powerful as well, because if the stores are telling the distribution centers, hey, this is what we sold today, and you know when the next truck's going to be. And if you can get a truck every single day, this is what Walmart does. Every Walmart store is within one day's drive of a distribution center, which means they're able to send a truck every day. And they, they receive every store receives trucks six days a week. They do take one day off. And so you're able to send a truck every day to a store, right? That means the store doesn't need as much room, as much storage room, back room space, which helps the inventory at the store come, you know, be reduced. Again, driving those, you know, gross margins and everything else because you're able to get the product when you need it, right? So this is, this is huge. And again, now from the distribution center flow six, this is where you've got the, um, the distribution center describe, talking to the man, manufacturer saying, hey, we need more of this, and then the buyers and everything else. So when you manage all this information electronically, digitally, not like picking up phones, but everything goes instantaneously, this can be a huge competitive advantage for your retail company designing these relationships. And it's not easily copied. Now, part of this inflow, information flow, right? So 
you, you need you do need to collect all this data someplace. And the way that we collect all this data about the with the UPC codes, we use what's called the data warehouse, right? So this collects all the purchase information. We then use the electronic data interchange. This is this is the inner the what it, really an internet, right? Where we have computer to computer exchanging documents, except because it's not internal, it's with vendors and, and everything else, it is a data interchange where you're going from one company to the next. This helps again facilitate communication. It's very quick. There's very few errors that happen. So all of this information is huge in sharing it. And that that's part of managing your using um, technology to manage your supply chain. Now, as we go through, the goal is by by opening up your systems and sharing all this information with your vendors and, and everything else, what you're going to do now is have vendor managed inventory where we tell the manufacturer they're responsible for manu you know maintaining their retail inventory at the various stores, right? So that's, it, it takes a lot of collaboration. It takes a lot of data sharing. There's so much information being going back and forth and it, it helps reduce the cost, not just for the retailer, but also for the vendor. This is a huge piece. And this is again, what Mr. Sam saw back in the 1970s, early eighties. And so he was such a visionary in this area. And this is why Walmart is so good at getting product to their stores and managing that retail store. Now, I will will make this one share this one item. Walmart is probably the best in the world at getting large amounts of inventory through their supply chain, right? Because they buy things in bulk. You know, they buy you know thousands and thousands of products. You ask Walmart to move one you know a box of band aids or a you know a one item thing like a uh, you know, some aspirin or something like that. Those, those smaller items that, you know, you only have one or you only need one or two of, they're not very good at that because their systems are designed for large scale. Uh, in, in my own research and everything, the companies that really do the, the one-offs, the, you know, those one items, well, that would be Walgreens as a store, yeah, as a company. They do that very well with their stores. And then Amazon's really good at this as well with the ones. So uh, so with that, that brings us to the end of our uh, first lecture video for week five.